Hello and welcome back to the artist feature series studying Hans Zimmer and with this last key point we are looking at the experimental and versatile side of his compositions. Now once again this is a fairly easy concept to grasp but to master it like he does is very difficult. I've tried my best in my own track to be experimental and use different instruments that I wouldn't normally combine with uh, normal violins and orchestral instruments and generally I think I've done okay but obviously not on the same level as Hans Zimmer. So basically what I mean by being experimental and versatile is just going mental on some decisions. For instance some of the videos I've linked in the article show you either a different instrument that I've never seen before called an Xpera bass which is I think it's a combination of a double bass, a cello, a violin, all on the same instrument, and it has such a incredibly unique sound. And alongside that, the other video is Hans Zimmer recording 12 drum kits in one room playing the exact same rhythm. I'm not entirely sure how possible it is to replicate that in a DAW, but it kind of proves how experimental he is being. And it's not just to say, you know, use a synthesizer here rather than an actual an instrument um, it is just no matter what you do just be different with it so normally obviously you'd record a drum kit in a certain way or whatever he's gone out and recorded 12 just just because it sounds big and it worked and with uh, Blade Runner uh, 2049 he did the um, soundtrack for that and he's using all these synthesizers these atmospheric sounds that just sound incredible and a normal orchestral piece might have worked for that track, uh, sorry, might have worked for that film, but would they have worked as well as these synthesizers? I don't think so. But he tried it, and it worked. And more often than not, he experiments with things, and it works out. One thing that I could replicate that I've heard in his tracks was distortion. It's not just a distorted guitar. It was a distorted violin or cello or anything like that. I've been experimenting myself with... Uh, distortion on these different uh, stringed instruments. So I heard it in the Wonder Woman theme and I think it's a combination of a, a distorted guitar and a distorted violin but I've just gone with the violin and I think it sounds amazing and that's just with uh, a legato articulation. I've tried it with spit staccato and the other staccatos and things like that. It sounds really cool and I'll show you it now and it's just it's kind of my little tip especially with a DAW where in some ways you can be limited. You can't really do 12 drum kits in the same way. You just won't have, you won't have a big enough room, obviously, in a DAW because you don't have a room. So instantly you're not getting the sound waves hitting each other from the different drum kits, creating a different sound, possibly phasing in a really cool way. It's a very digital phase if you're ever going to combine drum kits in a DAW you're not putting them in the same room as much as you try and put the same reverb on it it's not like they're conflicting with each other's reverb and that's a, an interesting thing with recording like pianos for instance like this is kind of off topic but if you play two notes at the same time it's going to resonate differently in person on the piano than if you were to play two notes on a sampled piano in a DAW they're not going to resonate the same way because they're not interacting with each other. You're hearing them together, but they're they're two separate sounds. Anyway, from there, I have distorted some violin strings, some cellos, some spizzicato cellos, I think it is. And from there, I have created some really cool sounds. So I'll play them now. So that's a spizzicato cello and it has a slight bit of distortion on it through a bus and it's a just a preset on Logic um, that I've converted into a auxiliary channel so I can put it onto a bus uh, called Arena Ready and it just sounds really cool and I've combined it with some synthesizers, some atmospheric pads and things just like Blade Runner 
And that's how this track has gone. It's gone from being very uh, free-flowing and emotional to synthesizers and dramatic sounds. And that's why this distorted spizzicato cello works, why distorted violins work, because it's still using the same sounds from earlier in the track, but it's adding some digital sound to it, which sounds so gritty, just like the synths and things. And so it combines together a lot better. So another cello is playing the uh, legato melody, but it's once again distorted. <laughs> sounds really cool so alongside that experimental sound the versatility comes with the fact that Hans Zimmer can compose for any film and he gets it right in my opinion that's why in this track that I've tried to create um, in his style I have gone from that free-flowing emotional intimate sound with the progression to having synthesizing atmospheric pads uh, experimental strings to try and show that side of him and show that versatility that he has and so I'll play a little section of that now flowing from the previous section <laughs> play it all together with the distorted strings as well. So there you have it, that's my take on his experimental side, his versatile side, and to really point out what he can do with his compositions and all the different styles and genres that he can accommodate for with whatever film he seems to be composing for. And that's why I wanted to try and demonstrate just a few small things that can help your track sound a little bit more experimental and hopefully what that can do is make your tracks more versatile or make you as a composer more versatile I should say. Another thing you could do with this and it didn't quite work for what I was going for unfortunately but is change up the time signature. Be a little different, be experimental with that especially go for a weird one like a 7-8 like a because then combining that with a 4-4 four, four, or if you're going for a 4-4 four, four to a 6-8 it just changes it up a bit, it just becomes a different track. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this artist feature series on Hans Zimmer. I'll be doing many more artists. I've got a list of 13 or 14 big ones that I'm going to study and listen to a bunch of tracks using the This Is Spotify playlists that are created and uh, create more and more tracks, create more and more videos to try and broaden your sound and hopefully broaden my sound too. Thank you for watching, please subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.